My name is Reverend Ruth Wamboyo. Um, I am a pastor, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, and above all, I am bo I'm a born again Christian. And um, um, I can say I'm a gospel recording artist, but more of a worshiper. At form two, that's when I composed my first song, which is I've never seen a man, I've never seen a man, I've never seen a king, I've never seen a woman. It's in my Mabo Sawa Sawa album. That's the first song I ever composed. And I sang to my class and everybody was saying, wow. And that time, I think Dolly Patron was the in thing. So they were saying, hey, we have a Dolly Patron in class. And that was very amazing because I had that cheeky voice. I used to have a soprano that nobody probably um, at, that, at my time could reach. So, um, and at that time, that is when I realized that music is my calling. And by the time I was done from four, I knew no matter which other, what other opportunity will come, I will end up being in music. My first encounter with the Reverend Ruth Amoyo was like 10 years ago when she came to record at Fitzcore Studios owned by the Kasangas. At that time I was engineering her project. Then from there on I've produced a few albums for her. I met uh, Ruth 1999, one of the studios in town here. Yes, and that's where we just came to be uh, friends. I've worked with uh, Reverend Ruth Wamboyo for 14 years. Our first encounter was uh, at Wilnag Institute. I was a student there, I think back in two, 20, 2004. Uh, she'd come to shoot her first, uh, uh, I think her first video, Mambo Sawa Sawa. And um, I was honored, I was a cameraman then. I did it. I'm the one who shot it. I think I'm going to go 40. I'm going to go 40. I'm going to go 40. The first video that I did for her as an individual ni Shama, which was a big hit. I'm going to lift. I'm going to go That was the first song. I'm going to go brand new. I'm going to My first encounter with Reverend Ruth Pamoyo was way back. The ends of Sing and Shine, Joy Bring Us. I can't remember those years, but early, eight, early 80s, 90s. Yeah, I met her, met her through Kasangas. We used to do recordings quite a bit at Kenya Broadcasting Corporation. When I decided to pursue my dream, um, I had to look for an opportunity, for a way to make it happen. And I heard there was a crusade in Yahururu town, because I come from Nyandara myself. And um, I had this Pastor Paul Kuria, that time he was an evangelist. I heard that he's coming to town and uh, he's, he's, he's really quite a singer. And I decided I'm going to go to one of the crusades. And it so happened that uh, when the people were organizing saw me, they knew I could sing. So they, they went and asked him if I could sing with my sisters. And uh, we did one song and uh, he was very impressed. And he told us, hey, young girls, do you want to record? And we said, yes, we want to record. After talking to our parents, we went through your bus, we stayed at his home, he nurtured us, and um, we produced music, and from there, when we went to Joy Bring Us to present, then uh, Kasanga saw us, and when he saw us, he said, wow, these girls are singing nicely. That is around the end of 1993, 94, they are around the January. And uh, he said, uh, can I do a project with you? And that's how the journey was actualized. In early 90, 1993, that is when uh, I met Ruth Wamuyu, who came to me together with her sisters. There was uh, Paris, Molly, and, and Ruth, and they came to me for production. At first, they had come to be produced and be featured on TV, but we noticed that they had talent that needed to be promoted. And so I invited them to my house and uh, coached them uh, to record an album. They did not have a name, they were calling themselves the Muta, Muta sisters, but we had to find a name for them, which was the songbird, which they used uh, in their music. And they recorded their first album, which was called uh, Niwega Jesu. Niwega, Niwega, Niwega Jesu. 
So we promoted that music on radio and TV until the group Songbird was known. After we did Mambo Sawa Sawa, um, it was that time when girls get married. It was around 1998, 1997-1998, and that's the beginning of another story. I want to appreciate Bishop Pius Muiru and uh, Pastor Lucy Muiru. They, uh, they actually mentored us and took us like our, their own children. And uh, they were actually behind the Mambo Sawa film. They took us in. They actually even provided for us. They took round, us round for their crusades. And people would think Mambo Sawa and Kunanulu Gizani were one that the same thing. After now, we get married, we go our separate ways. So it was not possible to remain as a group. And, um, I felt the passion was still in me, so I pursued the passion. Actually, the same year, 2000, 2001, I did Asante. And um, in Asante, I put a Kikuyu song called Gogo the Gatata Jakufu. And the Kikuyu song overshadowed uh, the Aswahili music. Well, though Asante did well, but it overshadowed it. And that is where my Kikuyu music was born. I'd started as, as a Swahili artist, but now I joined and became a Kikuyu artist. And from there, I did, um, after that, that inspired me to do Dire Kama Higamaine. I did and put Go the Gata song there because the Kikuyus were saying that we need an album that has all Kikuyu songs. So I did that. After that, it inspired another album called Shama Mokera Gather, which I did around 2004. It's still relevant to think I did it yesterday, and um, after that I did Tiganewe. So Kikuyu songs came back to back. After that I did, um, that's when after that I did um, Ma Inuka Umsifu Bwana, which is Atanikumbuka, which has Nani Kamawewe, around year 2005. And um, it did very well. Thereafter I did Federa, Federa Jesunira Riruka. I think Kikuyu, the Kikuyu music uh, was received with more warmth and not that the others were not as powerful. And um, after that I did, um, which other song in Swahili? I did Angalia. Angalia is a Swahili name, Surrender. Um, it's a Swahili album as well. And time by time I unfolded until now, I think I'm about uh, 14 albums by the grace of God in a period of 25 years. In about 100 and uh, maybe 10, 10 songs. Ruth has brilliant songs, I tell you, right from the time she started writing. I remember Mambo, Sawa Sawa, Mambo, then the Kikuyu ones. You know I sing a lot of Kikuyu, by the way, so her songs are wonderful. The latest one is Gai Mora Dimi, you know, you know, yeah. Gai Mora Dimi, Wera Di Magero Rio Kweda, Nagoti Rio Geko Ria Kioria. That's a song that has hit the charts, you know. Another song was um, Maria You know, like that. One of the albums that I did, and uh, that, that album did very well, you know, it was uh, Inuka. Inuka. There are two memorable moment, moments I cannot forget about Ruth. One time as we were doing the first album rehearsals, I kind of uh, was going to change my mind because I thought, you know, the music was not, was not, was not uh, sounding the way I had wanted. And then I was about to, to decide whether to record them or not to record. And that time Ruth was not kind to me. She, she said, no, you cannot change your mind. We've come all the way from Nyahururu. I think that they used to come from Nyahururu, coming to record, and we've spent a whole week in your house uh, rehearsing. You can't change. And so Ruth was very categorical, and I listened to her, I agreed. Another time was uh, a day I picked her, went to, to sing at Kabarak, Kabarak uh, High School, where uh, the, the former president Moy was present. Ruth did her song uh, Mambo Sawa Sawa until the entire, the entire church of students and other dignitaries 
We were very happy and they were moved by the song Mambo Sawa Sawa. I can remember one day we used to meet a lot and she used to just love me. You know, Ruth, the way we used to laugh, you know? Yeah, so she asked me to meet her, uh, to meet her at her place of work. My gosh, Nilipoenda Pale, Ruth was in a tiny shop. <laughs> tiny shop, you just see the head. You're like, Karen, you have to do it. I said, Kai, Ruth, I'm wrong with co op and somebody did it. It was like a light, tiny little shop, but then God can work miracles because right now you can't compare. It's the same roof that I met. At first, um, our temperaments were not gelling well. How she likes to work, how I like to work. Our work systems and styles were different, but over time, since we both wanted the same thing, which is the best possible product from her music, we were able to be of like mind and become. Friends. Getting a studio. Hey, I actually got a dream from that day that I'll get a studio of my own. Um, and I actually got a studio where I record, I've record, always recorded my music. And I said, even if not many people record at a Zero to Hero Studios label, I am having the satisfaction that I can record any time that I want. The reason being, there was only that time, I think, the Baptist, there was Andrew Crawford, just very few studios. So that time, by the time you came to record, you would book probably, or there was also Limax, you would book a studio almost a year in advance. So, number one thing we used to do that is so different from now is that you, need to, you needed to rehearse your songs very well. You, you would hire, there were rooms that used to be hired for practice because of course a keyboard, a drum set, those things were rare in those times. So you'd practice and practice to make sure that the two hours you are located for studio you not make mistakes. The instrumentalists were also very rare. And that time we had the influence of people coming from Tanzania. There were not many Kenyans who were coming. But now you produce the music. That time there was no CD. There was a cassette. The one that you used to roll like this. And then if, it is, if, if the radio is uh, probably uh, anointed in a different way, it will swallow the whole cassette and uh, you'll be left without music. And uh, that is where we began. For somebody to approve to be to produce your music, you had to go and sing to that radio for somebody to listen to your music. When I look at now and I see that you can walk into a studio, just a computer and something and do your music, it's a blessing. We are living in better times. And we, we used to use camcorder. You will do like 14 songs to fill the cassette. And uh, once you fill the cassette, you would do the videos of all of them. And you would be shocked we used to do it in a day because you couldn't afford the cost. We would hire a PD for like 7,000 a day. We used to use tapes then. So you, you factor in budget for tapes, uh, radios, because we didn't have small phones. We used to carry big, big, big radios. Edit suit, we had a hand. machine yangu ya kwanza ni Revo Wamoya ni saidi ya kubai. It was very hard to get comp, ya ku edit. The graphic cards, you, we, we, hizo siku liko na assemble. Unaji assembly ya machine. But I come through, ndi wanakuwaga, na muitaga big sis tango. It's my big sis. My inspiration to write music come from, first of all, my personal convictions. And uh, secondly, most of these convictions are conceived in prayer. And there's a lot of worship. So it's just an expression of what the conversations that happen on the inside. Surprisingly, I write them on the altar in five minutes. So I can also attribute it to divine inspiration because there is, there is a place in man, the Bible says, and the spirit breathes upon. And once he breathes upon you, you become creative in another dimension. Like I would say about Gaimur Adimi, the song I'm about to launch, it's a prayer I had. And I felt the vanity of having probably riches and having everything and never enjoying it. And I realized it's a blessing of God, first of all, to have riches, to be blessed. And it's secondly, it's also a blessing of God to enjoy it. And I just made it a worship and a prayer together that you who blesses who you bless, bless me again. And when God blesses you twice, it means I, you have the blessings and you can also enjoy them. Probably one of the things that has made Ruth stand out is the fact that her songs are very based on scripture. And so if you sing the songs she's written, you can actually see their sim simplicity but also ministers to your heart. Because by the time I go to studio, I select from maybe a hundred songs. So I, I can't say that there is one song that is more mean, meaningful or more my favorite, but I can assure you that depending on what times and seasons you are in, there is always a song that will minister to you. I like uh, the song Inuka. Inuka, 
That song I like because it blesses me. I used to play it on radio when I was uh, uh, having radio uh, programs. Somebody who wants to be like me, I would tell them that there is no formula to it. It is only follow your passion, don't give up, and be in the music, probably I would call it ministry, not industry. Because when you call it an industry, you will be expecting revenue. And I'm not saying you'll not get revenue. You'll have other expectations other than giving. You'll be more of receiving than giving. My future plans, ooh, they is great. Well, first of all, my greatest passion right now. And that's why in 2006, I created what we call Kigosho Night. Kigosho Night is Praise Night. My greatest passion is to redefine worship in Kenya and if, if possible in East Africa. I love Reverend Ruth because she has a vision to nurture singers. Not just singers, but people who are on the pulpit. Prayer, prayer, prayer. It's important to value and nurture your gift in prayer. Reverend Ruth Omoyo is a wife and a mother of two, a gospel minister and a pastor at House of Judah Ministries. In 25 years, she has managed to release 14 albums. <laughs>